Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. Oh, my goodness gracious. You know, it's by His Word that we are made clean. Amen. Oh, you guys know that. And this is what I'll be talking about today. We need to learn. We need to learn as a church to trust in the Word of God. Amen. Because we're upon perilous times, and if we do not trust in the Word of God, we're in trouble. Right. All right? We are in big, big trouble. So, brothers and sisters, today, the Lord wants me to share with you all a message about faith about his word and where we stand as individuals but we may stand as individuals now I'm not talking to anybody I'm simply going to be challenging you all including myself to grow our faith in Jesus Christ Amen. so after today I pray that everyone will walk out of here with no unbelief in their minds that you will walk out of here with your head held up high not with pride or with, with, with autism but with boldness, that you can trust in whatever the Word of God says, no matter the situation, no matter what, or no matter how you feel. Let us pray. Oh, merciful Father, we just want to thank you, God. You are holy. You are nothing but dust. But you fill us up with your Spirit. And you give us strength. God, I'm nothing but dust standing here today, only kept by your breath, only kept by your word, dear Lord. Please, Father, just hide me behind the cross, dear Lord. Hide me behind the cross because I'm nothing, God. Lord, I want you to increase, Lord. I want you to increase, dear Lord, Amen. as I decrease. Amen. I decrease so much that all the people can hear is you, dear Lord. This is your message. This is your time. This is your church. Amen. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, brethren, we fall into two camps when it comes to our faith. We either, stay with me now, we're either evolutionists or creations. Now, you may be wondering, well, what do those two terms have to do with Please stay with me throughout the sermon. As Elder Duncan mentioned this morning, repetition deepens the impression of the mind. So I'll be repeating some things just, just so that we can fully understand what the Lord has for you all. Well, first thing is first, we need to define what evolution is. What is it? Now this is from the treatise of the origin of species, written by one of the chief evolutionists. This is what they, this is what they say. Evolution is a theory that represents the course of the world as a gradual transition from the indeterminate, or the unknown, to the determinate, no, from the uniform to the varied, and which assumes the cost of these processes is to be imminent, or self-existing, or embedded in the world itself, thus is to be transformed. Now, you might be a little, what does that mean? Don't worry, I'm going to break it down, okay? Just stay with me, stay with me. It's synonymous with progress, hence the word evolution evolved, right? A transition from the lower to the higher, from worse to better. This progress points to an increased value in existence as judged by what we feel. So in other words, our progression is based on not what we think, but on what we feel. Let me, let me break that down, okay? So... It represents the course of the world as a gradual transition from the lower to the higher, from the worse to the better, and assumes that this process is imminent in the world to be transformed by itself. That is to say, brothers and sisters, that things get better of itself, and that what it would cause it to get better is itself. So it has no other dependency on any other source, no higher power. power. It was always dependent on self. Okay. This progress marks an increased value in existence, is marked by our, and judged by our feelings. In other words, you know better because you only feel better. Right? Doesn't that sound familiar? You know, so, so essentially, you know there has been progress because you 
feel it. Not because you know it, because you feel it. Your knowledge of your feelings regulate your progress from worse to better. So, now, what has been the process of your progress from worse to better? Has it been through many ups and downs? Has your acquiring of the power to do good, which is the good work, which is our God, been through a long process of ups and downs from the time you professed Christ Jesus in your life up until now? Has it appeared sometimes that you had made great progress? In other words, in, let's say you're in the ministry, uh, you know, you grew up in the church and you've been super involved and you've been, you know, you've gone home by Christ, you had the zeal and everything's going well. Uh, everything is nice and pleasant. Your ministry, your 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 either whether you're singing, your preaching, your teaching, whatever it may be, things are going well. Have we been there before? Okay, okay, all right, cool. Then, without a moment's warning, there will be some kind of horrible event that happens in our lives. Some kind of eruption. And everything will be spoiled. All the things that God has promised just goes down the drain. Nevertheless. In all the ups and downs, you start in another effort. So through this process, which is long continued, you come to where you are today. And looking back over it all, you mark some progress, but it's only judged by your feelings and not determined by this, by the word of God. So, you might be thinking, well, what does this have to do with faith? Where does the creation part come in? Let's go to the word of God. Hebrews. Let's go to let's go back to our scripture in Hebrews. Chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Here's some pages turning. And it says, By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed. By the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So, my question to you is, how were the worlds made? How were the rocks made? How were the trees, the, the animals, the fish, the fowl of the air? How about, how were we made? There is no missing link here, brothers and sisters. We did not come from worms or protoplasm. We came from the Word of God. Amen? Amen. 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 Believe me, let's turn to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 33. I love the Bible, church. I love the Word of God. I'm going to be going through the Word of God a lot today. I hope that's okay with some of you. Amen. Amen. Great. There are a couple of amens. Okay, Psalm chapter 33. We're going to read verses 6 to 9. Psalms chapter 33, 6 to 9. And the word of God says, By the, by the what? By the word of who? The Lord. The heavens were made, and all the hosts of them, by the breath of his mouth, he gathers the water of the sea together as a heap, he lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world of the world stand in awe of Him, for He. Want say what did he do? He spoke. He, some words say He spake. In the King James version, I mean from the New King James, He spoke and it was done. It wasn't halfway done. It wasn't eighty percent done. It wasn't ninety percent done. Not even ninety-nine point nine. It was done. Amen. He commanded, and it stood fast. Well, how do we know? Well, in, in the book of Genesis, we won't go there, but I believe it's in chapter 6, where it talks about uh, there will be uh, the four seasons, right? Do we see four seasons here today? Yes. Fall, winter, spring, summer? Maybe not in Florida because you know Florida's kind of it's like feels like hot all the time. But <laughs> but it's still there. It still stand fast today. And we're gonna go through other Bible verses today just to see how mm, mm, how good the Lord is. Okay. Yeah. Now, when everything was created, because remember, nothing could have come into existence. We just read that everything came by the word of God, by the breath He commanded, and it stood fast. Okay. Nothing could have come into existence. Unless the most holy, most sovereign God who gave his only son Jesus Christ spoke it. 
Okay? When God spoke, it happened. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. In Genesis chapter 3, verse, in verses 3, 6, 9, 11, and 14 and 15, and many others, we see that when God spoke, he wanted to make light, there was light. When he called forth, uh, he created the, 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 the vegetation, when he separated the firmaments, when he created us, it happened. It happened. Period. Now, let's think about this. How much time do you, do you think passed when he spoke all things into existence? That, of course, were always in his will, because when the Lord speaks, he's sovereign, it's done. It's his will. Okay? So how much time do you think it passed when he said, from the moment he said, let there be light. Do you think it was millions of years? Do you think it was hundreds of years, thousands of years? It was instant. It was instant. No time passed. Remember this. Evolution is a long process. They talk about millions of years this, millions of years that, blah, blah, blah. But, it is, it is, it is. It is. I was doing some research about it, and yeah, let me just let me just continue. God has said it says, but creation is by the word spoken by God. Amen. When the Almighty, all powerful, real living God yeah. spoke into existence all things, listen to Genesis, it happened immediately. There wasn't no hesitation. <laughs> it happened immediately as soon as the Lord spoke. Amen. When God said, let there be light, not a second pass. Between God speaking of the word and the appearing of the thing. Bear with me now. Don't forget that creation is immediate, or if not, it's not creation. If it's not immediate, according to the will of God, it is evolution. When God speaks, there is light in his word. That the word of God, the word of God is the same yesterday. It's the same today and forevermore. It lives and abides forever, and it has everlasting life. In it, the Word of God, it, this is, brothers and sisters, this is a living thing. This is a living The life that is in it is the very life of God. Let's look at what Jesus said about the very Word of God, or essentially, let's look at what Jesus essentially said about himself. Let's turn to John, the book of John, the Gospel of John. Gospel of John, chapter 6. We're going to go to 6. and verse 63. That's John chapter 6, verse 63. This is the words of Jesus. The great words of Jesus, what he said, not what I said, what he said said, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, this is Jesus speaking, the, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. life. Let's go to John, we're still in the book of John, and chapter 1. I'm just, the Lord wants just to show us that Oh, have mercy, have mercy. Let's, let's read. Let's read John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. Well, a lot of us here know this, but we're going to read it anyway. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. Stop. We just read in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, that everything was created by the Word of God. Let's continue in verse 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness is not comprehended. Let's jump to verse 14 in the same chapter. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Brothers and sisters, it's about time, as my sermon title says, it is time to believe that this, this word is alive. It has the power to do incredible things in your life. So remember, creations believe that in the word of God, you want to be in that camp. You want to be in the camp where we're Bible-believing Christians, where we believe in the word of God and nothing else. You cannot serve 
You cannot, you have to be hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. So we would, as Christians, as Bible-believing Christians, we should be, we should believe in what the Word of God says. They believe, we should believe that it stands fast and will always hold its grounds against any pagan philosophy this world has to offer. We should believe that even if we're going through some troubled waters, that we will not be shaken or feel down because the Word of God promises, just like it says in Psalm chapter 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So, and because Continuing reads, for you are with me, your rod and staff comfort me. An evolutionist has a good day, then all of a sudden it turns sour and there is no remembrance of the word of God. It goes right out the window. <laughs> Everything that you read and claim to believe since you were a little boy or girl goes out the window. Because, because you know. So, if this is you, fear not, brethren. We're going to go through some biblical examples where we can find how the Word of God moved in action and still moves in action today. Amen. Where we see Jesus Christ speaking and it, and it happening. Let's go to Matthew. We're going to go through some stories today. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Chapter... Eight. I'm going to read verses from 5 to 13. Matthew chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. It says, Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only... Speak the word. Speak. All right. Oh, only speak the word. Here's a man that did not grow up in the church. Here's a man that grew up in the Roman society, a centurion. And he already knew that there was power in the word of God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we spend years in the church and a little we get a little bump. Oh my goodness. We're falling. We're, but the Word of God stands forever. It is everlasting. It has power to create. We're going to see that a little bit further in the sermon. But here we, got, here we have the centurion having more faith than mercy. Some of us here. And at moments in my own life, more than me. Mercy, mercy, mercy. But he said, only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. So stop right there. So we knew that God had authority, that the Word had authority. Yes. Amen. Let him keep that, please keep that in mind. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And to another one, come, and he comes. And to my servant, uh, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled. I could only imagine the face of Jesus being marveled. You know, I, I could only imagine, right? He said to those who followed him, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, right. not even in Israel. Right. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Let's go to, let's go to, let's go to Mark. Let's, let, let's look at more examples. Let's, more, let's look at more examples. And by the way, that very same hour, the servant of the story was healed. Was healed. Let's go to Mark. Chapter 1. I'm going to read. Hmm. Let's read verses 40 to 42. Mark chapter 1, verses 40 to 42. Right. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I am willing to be cleansed. As soon as he, as soon <clears throat> as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Immediately. When, if it's God's will, it's going to be, it's going to happen for your life like that. Faster than, faster than this. Faster than I can blink my eyes. 
That's powerful. That is powerful. Hello. Let's go to Luke. I get so excited because I've, actually, I've seen this in my own life. I've seen this happening. Church, we have to rewire our brains. The world today, the secular world, has this program to believe that God is not with us, that God is not alive. But we must not be conformed to this world. We must renew our minds with this. For some of us, it might take a while because we've been so embedded in the world. We've been so hardwired, pre-programmed to walk in the ways of the world, but when Christ comes in the picture, he makes all things new. All things new. Goodness gracious. Luke. Luke chapter 8. Okay, Luke chapter 8. Verse, we're going to see how. Chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. I told you we were going to be using the word today. I mean, it's what I did last time, but every single time. I'm called to be up here. Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 25, we read, Now it happened on a certain day that when he got into a boat and his disciples, with his disciples, he said to them, Let's cross over the other side to the lake. And they launched out. But as soon, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with, they were filling with water, and they were in jeopardy. Have mercy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master! We are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. That happened like God. As soon as he rebuked it, it was done. It was done. But he said to them, where is your faith? They were afraid and marveled, saying to one another, who can this be? For he commands even the winds and water, and they obeyed him. Let's turn to Mark. Mark chapter 5. We'll see another immediate thing happening in the Word of God when, when God speaks. Mark chapter 5. We're going to read verses 25 to 29. 25 to 29. Mark chapter 5, verses 25 to 29. Now, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years. Wow and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all she had and was no better, but grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garments. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, did that say next week? Did that say the next day? Did that say five minutes, a minute, 30 seconds later? Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed and afflicted. Brothers and sisters, if we start reaching for Jesus and claiming his word, Jesus does not want us to be sick at all. He doesn't want that. You think, you, think, you think he wants us to be filled with, with disease and, 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 and all these cancers and stuff? He does not want you to suffer. He doesn't, want, he doesn't want you to. But if only we believe this woman, and back in those days, if you were a woman and you touch a man like that, you were in serious trouble. But she has so much faith to say, you know what? I'm going to reach out for my Savior. I'm going to reach out for my Savior. I don't care what the law of the land says. I'm going to reach out and grab Jesus. Let's turn. To Luke. Back to Luke. <laughs> and brothers and sisters, there's so much, but we, we, we'll spend like three hours going through the many healings and many blessings that God's given. But listen to Luke. We're going to go through two more. This one and one more. We're going to Luke chapter 6. Trying to show you that God is awesome and God is real and His Word is real. Yeah. Luke chapter 6. We're going to read verses... Six to ten. We're going to do it quickly. Now it happened on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught. That's Luke chapter six, verses six to ten. Now it happened on another Sabbath also that he entered the synagogue and taught. And a man was there whose right hand, right hand was withered. So the scribes and Pharisees watched them closely. Why were they doing that? Yeah. Mind, your, mind your business. 
whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man who had the withered hand, Arise and stand here. And he arose and stood. Then Jesus said to them, the Pharisees, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy? Couldn't answer. When he had looked around at all of them, he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored as whole as the other one. All Jesus had to do was say, Stretch out your hand, and he was healed. There's power in the word. And one more. We're going to do, we'll go through one more. Because there were so many. I'm like, Lord. Matthew. Be with Moses. I'll do it for your sister Brown. I'll do it for your sister Brown. But they were filled with rage and discussed with one another that what they might do to Jesus. Mercy. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to start in verse 2. Verse Eight. Let's do that. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on the bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And it's also on the screen. Thank you. Thank you, brother. And at once, some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? See, they didn't believe. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They were evolutionists. For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. No priests, no, no other human being on this planet, but Jesus can forgive sins. Amen? Amen. Then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. His sins were forgiven, and he was healed from his physical ailments at that moment. Only Jesus, only the Word of God has the power to do that. Verse 8, last verse. And when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Brothers and sisters, in these instances, not a moment passed when Jesus healed these individuals. It was immediate. We see, we see here that the word of God at the beginning, even at the beginning of creation, had the creative energy to produce the thing which the word pronounced. <laughs> we can see the very same power of the word being manifested right here in these scriptures. Yes. The ultimate mission of Jesus was for him to come into this world to show everyone that he is the way, the truth, and the life Amen. to save us from our sins. Yes. He demonstrated to us over and over again in the Bible to everyone back then living in these times mm -hmm. and continues to do so today yes. because the Word of God does not change. Yes. It's the same yesterday, today, yes. and forevermore yes. that the Word of God is able to do and produce the very thing that it says. Yes. Hopefully right now, if you are in the camp of the evolutionists, you are moving to the camp of believing in the Word of God or creation. And hopefully we can walk out of here saying, wow, I can fully trust in the Word of God today. Whatever Jesus said, he said it, believe it, forget everything else. Amen. All right, all right, all right. When Jesus told a certain person that his sins were forgiven, when you just read, it happened immediately. It took no time. Now, if the Word of Jesus, the Word of God, promises and speaks forgiveness to us, no. Why do we let a second, a minute, why should we let a second, a minute, an hour, a whole day pass if we really believe that the word of God is instant? Yeah. Let's go to the Bible. Hello. Let's go to 1 John. The word of God. We're going to search the scriptures here, there, there and later, line upon line, precept upon precept. We're going to do that today. 1 John. Yes. Yes. 1 John chapter 1. Verse 9, Word of God. 
written through man, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. All right. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It reads, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that happens like that. We saw it in, with, the, with the man that was paralyzed mm -hmm. and needed sins to be forgiven. It happened right away. Yes. Let's turn to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1. God is asking us not to, not to remain in our sins, brothers and sisters. Confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. That's Romans 10. You can write that down. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Now, but right now we're in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, and it reads, and this is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah. Come now. God is saying, come now. I mean, if you don't have it, come now. Let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, as a pretty deep red, they shall be as white as snow. Though... They, yep, they will be red like crimson. They shall be as mm. We'll see in Isaiah. Isaiah, I'm just letting the word of God speak for itself. Isaiah chapter 43. Let's go to 43. This is God himself speaking again through the prophet Isaiah. This, let's just, let's just read it. Isaiah 43, verse 25, and it reads, I have some pages. I know you guys are following along, so I'm going to wait. <laughs> 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. It says, I, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sin. This is God we're talking about. This is the word speaking. So why should we, when we ask God for forgiveness, why should we be thinking, oh man, you forgive me? Oh my God. Oh, I gotta. I have to do something. I have to participate in ministry. I have to keep the Sabbath holy. Well, you know what? If you're if, if you're not believing in the word that you're forgiven, how are you going to how are you going to withstand these these, these, these perilous times? Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Verse seven. This is what. Yes. Uh, Second Chronicles. Verse seven. Oh, chapter 7. Sorry. I'm thinking, I'm telling you guys. <laughs> Forgive me, church. Forgive me, church. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. There you go. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14 reads, If my people call are, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Not just say, Lord, I'm sorry, and they go right back to it. No, no, wait, no. God will give you the power to make the effort to turn away from the sins. Because remember, the flesh and the spirit are warring against each other. So God is the one, we're going to see in just a minute, God is the one that's going to give you a new spirit. Give you the power to turn away from them. But it reads, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Brothers, sisters, forgiveness is not a feeling. It is a promise. If, if we want it, if we believe it, if we really want it, God is ready to give it to us. Amen. Many of us here, you know, long, my long for a clean heart. We want a clean heart. Some of us pray that prayer and I hope God give me a clean heart. You know, we want to be being pure, we want to be holy, we want to be righteous, Lord, please give it to us. And sometimes we, you know, I don't know if it's happened to you, but in the past for me, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm not seeing any results. What's going on? It's because I was still in the camp of the evolutions. So are you? God is the one that is going to keep you. Turn to Psalms. Psalms. The Psalms. Psalms 51, chapter 51. Psalms, chapter 51, verse 10. You know, a Bible-believing church has to use the Bible, amen? Has to read the Bible. Yeah, we, have, we got to. We got to. So much foolishness out there. 
This is David's prayer after the nonsense that he did. If you, if you were listening carefully to my wife's wonderful spoken word that was inspired by God, I forgot what you said, but we'll go back to that. Yes, yes, it's about David. How about Jariah wasn't bulletproof? And, mm, 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 mm. You got to do that again, Jariah. It was great. Psalms chapter 51, verse 10. Create, and this, is, this could be our prayer too. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. We are not creating, giving ourselves a clean heart. It is God. So when we pray, we got to pray, God, Amen. you have to create in me. I can't create. I'm the creation. Amen. You're the creator. Amen. Hey, okay. Amen. This can only come by God creating with his word. And he said it. He said it. This comes by believing, by having faith. There is no other way. This is the verse, I, the verse that God really wants you to look at. Let's look at Ezekiel 36. Promises from God. Promises from God that only God can do. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. Verses 26. We're going to read verses 26 to 31. 26 to 31. Ezekiel 36. Verses 26 to 31. And it reads, pages I, it reads, I, this is, again, this is God speaking through his prophet Ezekiel. Okay? This is the Lord speaking. The word of God is speaking through Ezekiel. The Lord is saying, I will give you a new heart. And put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I, the, this is the Lord speaking, I will put my spirit within you. Here, here it is. And cause you, it is the Lord causing you. It is a, a compelling, it is not, it's not, it's, it's com God's word is compelling. God will cause you to walk in my, in my statute. And you will keep my judgment, judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Not because we are doing the work. It's because God is doing the work in us. Amen. And this thing is already done if only we believe. Amen. 29 says, I will deliver. I, here we go again. Ooh. God is delivering you Hallelujah. from Amen. all your uncleanliness. Amen. I will call for the grain to grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. This is the promise of God. Thank you, Lord. Don't Thank don't God. don't sit there and pray that oh, God I, I want to I want to have your strength so I can do this. No, no, no. Pray, God, by your strength you will keep me. God, you're, you by you are the one that's going to put a new heart in me, a new mind in me. You're the one that's going to give me your character. So God, I believe you have already given it to me in the name of Jesus. Amen. And believe it. Simple as that. Simple as that. What makes it real difficult, church, is that the, the we want to do things on our own. We will want to. We we we. How do I? How shall I put this one? That the flesh wants to take over what the spirit wants to do. Yeah. So because it is not in Christ, you're you're just not in Christ. It's, it's just. And continue says, and I will multiply the fruit of your trees and the increase of your fields. So that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and your deeds that were, that were not good. And you will loathe yourselves in your sight for your iniquities and abomination. God will put, God's going to put, he promised to put his spirit in you. He promised to give you the spirit to walk in his uh, judgments, to keep his commandments. Okay? He promised you to give you a new heart. And then, because a result is that, as a result, you're going to look at your sins and be like, I used to do that. Oh, nasty. Well, oh, I can't believe. Thank God for his mercy that he gave me his spirit to walk righteously. That's what you're going to be. You're going to be like, I used to, I used to smoke a little something. I used to drink a little alcohol. I used to watch things on the computer. I used to gossip. 
I used to do all that. Well, praise the Lord because it is only by His mercy Amen. that I can walk in, in the light of Christ. Amen. And so that we're talking about love this morning, it is only God that can put true love in you. Amen. If you try to force it yourself, Amen. Right, it's lust. It's lust. Not only that, you, you, you start off strong. You start off strong. And then, this is, this is the flesh. You start off strong, you're going well, and then, uh, boom. Yeah. <laughs> With God, God is able to keep you on the upward trend, on the, yeah. on the narrow path. God is able to keep you. That's the message that God wants you to hear this morning. Yeah. He put all this together. I mean, goodness gracious. Let's keep going, let's keep going. Let's go to one more. Uh, 2 Corinthians. No. Then we'll look at the Old Testament. New Testament and compare scriptures, okay? Yeah. It's been the same thing that we've been talking about. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. This is a declaration from God, okay? He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. So, and behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. This is God's will for us, church. Yes. So my rhetorical question to you is, will you live with an evil heart? If God promises you to put that, he's going to put, a new, give you a new heart, a new spirit. He's going to make you brand new. Everything brand new. Your spiritual life, okay, which is the most important life. He may not give you that fancy car, that, that nice job. He may not give you that, uh, uh, that boyfriend, that girlfriend, that husband, that wife. But God, is he, he wants to save you. He wants to save us. Okay? So, we should not, we, we, we will continue to live with an evil heart, church. Or will you accept a new heart created by the word of God? If God said it, believe it with all your heart. All you have to do is believe. It's almost like, okay, let me give you an example. If, would you, would you come to this church if you knew that the roof was cracking and breaking and at any moment you could break, it could break? No, because it's a safety hazard, right? So right now, you all have faith. We all have faith that because we look up and we say, wow, okay, everything's intact. Great. You have faith that this roof will, 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 will be sustained because, you know, because if not, if you, were, if you came from out here and you drove in and you saw holes in the roof and all that stuff and you're like, oh my goodness, what's happening? You know what I mean? You, you, you would, what I'm trying to say is, Trish, is that subconsciously, every day we have faith in the things of this world. We have faith in when we go on airplanes, when we walk in buildings, when we even tie our shoe. When we get on the bus, or the, the metro, or the transport, when we go to our jobs, when you you know and you know if you're working, you, you're expecting a paycheck every week, every two weeks, whenever you get paid, and you don't even think about it sometimes because you believe it's going to happen. These are material things. So how much more should we believe more in the Word of God that's everlasting, the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yeah. We should be believing and having that kind of faith where we don't even we don't even need to question and be like, oh, is God really going to do this for me? We shouldn't have that kind of thing. We put on our shoes, and we, we, we know, okay, we, subconsciously, every morning, it's a routine. We get up, we put on our shoes, and we have faith in our shoes that it's not going to break. Right? If not, we wouldn't put on our shoes, right? We wouldn't put on our shoes. Same thing with our cars. Every morning, we get up, start the car. Some of you have fancy cars. You push the start. Uh, <laughs> you know, you push the start, you turn the key, but you're not thinking, man, is my car going to die on me today? No, you're, mm, drive off. We need to have that kind of faith, that kind of faith that is just, that is, oh my goodness, we need to have faith in the Word of God. I can't put it any other way. We cannot keep continue to having so much faith in these secular, the worldly things that are just temporary. Okay. So, some of us here also would like to be set apart. And whole. I mean, who doesn't, right? Who doesn't want to be sanctified you know, and do things for the Lord? Who doesn't? I mean, if you're here today, it's because you want to hear a message from God and you want to walk in there. Just 
way much better than you were Amen. Thank you. before you came in, Amen. right? I mean, why else are we here, right? Let's turn to uh, John. John 15. Words of Jesus. Not my words. Words of Jesus. John 15, right? That's when you clean and holy and pure and set apart and Great things, great things to aspire for. John chapter 15, verses 1 to 3, it says, John 15, verses 1 to 3, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that he may bear much more fruit. Here it is. You are already clean because the word which I have spoken to you. Amen. Amen. So what do we need to do? We need to believe because Jesus said, Amen. you are already clean. Amen. That's the only thing you believe. That's a prerequisite. You have to believe. Right. You have to believe. If you don't believe, you're not clean. If you believe, you are clean. Amen. And as a result of that, the works will come out of you. And yeah. we're going to see that. We're going to see that in the yeah. Bible. Yeah. We're going to see that. Just, just... John chapter 17, just one page over. If you have a big Bible, it could be on the same page. But John chapter 17, verse 17. <laughs> Amen. How are we sanctified then? How are we, how are we set apart? How, what, is the, what is the answer to be set apart? Jesus said it himself as he was praying for his disciples. He said, John 17, 17. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them by your truth. Your what? Word. Your word is true. The word of God is what will set us apart and nothing else. So will you continue to have unbelief in your hearts? Or will you believe at this moment that the word of God is true and will be done immediately? This is praying. This is his this, this is the will of God for us. Now, to the works part. Some of us here want to do good work. Some of us here want to, you know, strive and and and, and um, write things for God. You know. We want to serve the Lord. Who doesn't, right? We do it for a while, you know, we're doing great. Like I said earlier, you know, we have a ministry, everything's going fine, and we just, we just drop like flies. Mercy. And it's happened to me before church, okay? So, in fact, the book of James, it talks about faith without works is dead. Amen. The problem is that Amen. we want to accomplish those works. So we don't even, sometimes we don't even consult God or even pray about it sometimes. Wow. We don't even consult God and we're like, let's go do this. Yeah. And then... Yes. And we're flying away, and then boom! Oh, yeah, a little problem comes, and you know, and then you're like, ah, I felt again, and I feel so miserable. Uh, no, uh, but uh, let's let's consult the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter two, verse ten. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. And the Bible reads, brothers and sisters, for we, us here, Amen. Bethlehem, we are his workmanship. Amen. And we were created in Jesus Christ. Thank you. Weren't we created in the image of God yeah. in the book of Genesis? Yeah. We are created in Jesus Christ for good works. Glory. We were created to give glory and to serve God. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Which God Prepare beforehand. God prepared all the good works that we should do to glorify Him before we were even born. Amen. So I don't want anyone here to walk out of here. I'm not worthy. I don't, how can I serve God? Everybody here, man, woman, and child. Hallelujah. That's it. Man, man, woman, and child. Yes. Don't walk out of here saying I'm not. I, I have no purpose in life. I'm. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm, I'm. We are essentially we are dust. But don't walk out of here with your head hang, with your head hang low, thinking to yourself, Wow, I'm useless. I'm no, because the Word of God promised us that God has prepared good works for you. You just gotta believe it that we should walk in them. We have a purpose in this world. God said it. He prepared all, every single, when, when he completed everything 
On the sixth day, he finished all his work. On the seventh, the Sabbath day, he rested. Every single work that he's ever completed is done. We just have to believe it. We just have to believe it because it says, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them, that we should, but we must believe. Amen. We must believe. Mercy. So, time and time again, you know, listen, the flesh, we cannot expect to get any good thing out of the flesh. Nothing. Okay, and sometimes we wonder why Why do I keep failing, right? Time and time again, we're up late, you're up late at night thinking, what's wrong with me? Why do I keep stumbling? But here's your answer. Stop trying. God prepared everything, all the works that we should walk in them. Stop trying to do things without God. God has already aligned everything for you. He's made your life. You don't need no horoscope. You don't need no psyche. God has a life. He's giving you everything if you just believe. You don't need no horoscope with the, the thing, whatever thing, thing, vices and uh, whatever. You don't need none of that. You, you want to know your future? Hello? Right here. This, your future is... Hmm, I'm not speaking to somebody. Okay? All right. We must look to the Creator and receive His creative word. We must receive this wholeheartedly, genuinely. If God said it, believe it. It is His will for us to do the works of God. So when we pray, we must pray according to the promise Bible text and believe that it is done in us and for us immediately. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Then those good works will appear. No, you don't. You just believe it. You just believe it. You don't have to think and try and do a scientific calculation. Okay, if I do this, no. no God said it. It should. Forget it. That's all you need to do. It. it is time that we believe, church. I do. Thank you. Because you live with the Creator. Thank you. And are in His presence in His Word. That's another thing. You got to study His Word. You got to be in the Word. Even though you you got to be in the Word. But once we do that, and only then, you will have that pleasant, quiet peace and genuine spiritual strength that will keep you day or night through the troubled times, through the darkest of moments in your through, through the darkest moments in your life, and also through the brightest. The word of God will keep you. So we're gonna we're gonna close here with this. But in closing, get asked yourself, church. This is for you, for all of us as individuals. Where do I stand? Are you, are you in the camp of the evolutionists or the creationists, the Bible believing Christian? Remember, evolutionists believe that God's word is not immediate, that something comes out of nothing. And we are nothing. But if we are dust, how is that possible? If we are dust, how can Good works come out of us if we are dust. Well, the Bible just said that God prepared every work before us. Evolutionists believe that there is no power in the Word of God. They also, unfortunately, are headed to eternal death. Creationists, Bible-believing Christians believe, which I pray all of us here will be, that God's Word is instant according to His will. Amen. Remember, if it's according to his will, and if he said it, it will be done for you faster than that. All things were created by God. This is what we should believe. That God is only sovereign. That God is adequate to produce all that there is. A clean heart, a right mind, the character of Jesus. God is more than adequate, more than adequate to produce and give you these things if you really want it. You just need to spend time with him alone and pray. Amen. There's no other way. There's no, I, you know, I'm not pulling out the Greek or the Hebrew. Or, just, just ask him for it. Just be honest and ask him. There's, you don't need to go to Southern University or anything like that. Not knocking that. But I'm saying you, you don't need to be a, 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 a theologian to ask God to give you his spirit. Amen. Just ask him. Ask him. And you shall receive. Amen. Ask him. If you don't ask him, maybe because you don't, you don't want it. We also hope in eternal life in Jesus. 
the brothers and sisters in closing, there are only two ways. There's no halfway ground. That's right. Every man, woman, and child in this world is either creationist or, or an evolutionist. You're either hot or cold for Christ. That's right. Remember, if you're an evolutionist, which is infidelity, that equals death. Creation, Christianity, in Christ Jesus, that's where you find life. In Christ Jesus, in yes. this, in this world. Amen. Find it in this. Christ, the word, in the word, there is life. Without the word, without Christ, there's only death. Amen. So choose, I, I beg of you, please choose Jesus. Please choose the word of God. Like the song said, that the Holy Spirit sung this morning, there's nothing too dirty. You've washed me in mercy. Amen. I am clean. God will give you a clean heart. God will produce in you the things that you cannot produce yourself. Amen. Just ask Him. I'm going to say that again. Just ask Him and believe. Oh, yes. Let us be hungry for the Word. Let the Word of God dwell in you. And let it dwell in you forever. And let all the people say, Amen. Amen.